just a little hint of um, of Dad Gad, really. <laughs> of Dad Gad tuning, of which you were uh, you were one of one of the founding fathers that of uh, fingerstyle in that tuning. Um, well, I found it by coincidence. You know, I was uh, fooling around with my tuning pegs, and mm -hmm. I was very much listening to a lot of blues at that time. Mm -hmm. So I realized that all those uh, self-taught blues players mm -hmm. played in different tunings. Some mm -hmm. played in major chords, some played in different chords to to have their bottleneck things. And uh, so that gave me the desire to do the same. And because I'm also self-taught, I come from classical piano where I had a academic instruction. Mm -hmm. But when it came to guitar, I taught myself. And so no one was there to tell me yes, no, right, wrong. Mm -hmm. So I. You know, I, I was very feeling very, very free. Um, I didn't want to take lessons because I didn't want to, to, to be again going into a sort of mold. You know, I, I, right. I, I felt like right. uh, I had to, to make my own experience, experiences. And so uh, I found this tuning one day in Brittany. I remember I was 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, wow, this is great. The guitar is really talking to me. Mm -hmm. Not that it was not talk talking to me before, but you know, when you play, mm -hmm. it, it sounds like a guitar shop to me right, right now, you know. <laughs> it sounds like, okay, well, please don't touch, don't touch. <laughs> ask, ask, we are going to give this guitar to you. Please do not touch it. <laughs> um, when I when I started to to play those open tuning, it was like an invitation. The guitar was sort of inviting me to to come closer to her. Yeah. And so, I I have built I guess I have built my intimacy, the my intimate relationship with the instrument from then on. Yes. It was not before. Before it was more like strumming and singing and and uh, singing uh, French uh, chansons and mm -hmm. also uh, singer-songwriters Bob Dylan, Cat mm -hmm. Stevens, uh, uh, Paul Simon and people mm -hmm. like that and, and French people. But when I started to play in that guy, the guitar sort of called me to play instrumental music back like I used to do on the piano. Yeah. Uh, so to, to play more instrumental stuff on the guitar, it was available, you know. So I started to listen to uh, um, the English uh, school of uh, fingerstyle of, of that mm -hmm. time, which was called uh, folk baroque, mm -hmm. with people like the two people I've been listening to first were John Rainbow and Bert Jansch. Yeah. And then uh, Bert Jansch played a song uh, called uh, Angie mm -hmm. uh, uh, from something that I think was written by David Graham, but. David Graham was a, a sort of mist, you know. It was mm -hmm. the, the, the I think I think for me is the founding father of world music on the guitar, yeah, yeah, yeah. in a way. And he was also known to play in that guy, uh, but other people played in that guy. Ray Cooter played played uh, things in that guy. Jimmy yeah, Page played yeah. in that guy. Uh, um, Johnny Mitchell, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think we all found this tuning by coincidence. I didn't know that guy was existing before I found it. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I, I have never been surprised that other people, I found it too. It's very easy to find that guy. You tune down the bass from E to D, you mm -hmm. tune down the two treble strings one step down and, and you're there. Mm -hmm. And it's calling you, what, what really, what spoke to me was that G. Yes. Which, which uh, in fact creates a sort of a end resolution. Yeah, yeah. The resolution into a minor or a major chord is extremely colored already. Mm -hmm. So it's good for, I guess, if you play bottleneck. And, and mm -hmm. still, I'm not sure, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I played also with uh, the G to F sharp. So it's like a really a major chord. Or you... But the thing is that you can, in fact, have the major. You do it yourself, you yes, see. It's yes, not imposed yes. to you by the, the nature of the tuning. Yeah. It's not dictate dictated to you. So, and then a, a friend of mine who is a jazz uh, musician said, oh, well, you know, you are in fact playing in a tuning which is suspended, the force is suspended. Right. So it's right. called, you call it dalgad, but if you want to be more technical, you should call it uh, de-suspended force. Mm -hmm. And that suspension, which creates a non-resolution, is mm -hmm. called a modeled, makes this tuning a model tuning because mm -hmm. it has no mode. Mm -hmm. So the, the mode being determined by the third, the presence of the third, mm -hmm. either it's minor or major, here you don't have a third. Right, right, right. So it's, it's, it's completely open. So that was one of my tunings, and I played in other tunings. Mm -hmm. um, and I played in standard tuning, I played in drop D tuning, so standard with the bass from E to D. Right, right. And I played in a few other tunings, and I, I did um, 
I did one album, two albums, in fact, like this, my two first records, where it's a sort of reflection of all those, uh, uh, this circumvolution with the guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, How old it, were you when you recorded this? Uh, my first record, I was 17. Mm -hmm. But before I went on the road as a bluegrass musician with mm -hmm. Bill Keith, the banjo really? player. Yes. Yeah. And Bill was my mentor. He was my, my like my elder brother. He was... Mm -hmm. It, it was amazing. I played the mandolin also mm -hmm. with him, and I played the guitar I, with a flat pick. I accompanied him uh, on a, a tune called Nola that mm -hmm. we did at every show because I recorded with him, and then we went on the road. He mm -hmm. had no idea that I also played the guitar in a completely different style. <laughs> he never heard me. Mm -hmm. So one day we are on the road, and, and one morning before breakfast, I wake up early, and I start to play my other things, and mm -hmm. he, he hears that. He says, wow, I didn't know you could do that. You are going to open every second set now with you playing alone. <laughs> and that was the end of my bluegrass career <laughs> because, because all the promoters invited me the next year to, to come and, on my own. So mm -hmm. I sold my mandolin and, and just that guitar. And that guitar came in my life in 1978. Mm -hmm. It was made by George Loudon. Mm -hmm. in Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. So I was one of the very first to play on Loudoun guitars, and, um, and we are very good companion. I had a few other Loudouns, but uh, this is, the George and I call this guitar the old lady. <laughs> How is the old lady, Pierre? Well, <laughs> she's fine, you know, I think she's missing you. She'd like, she'd like to get together with you again. <laughs> so some, once in a while, we go back to Belfast, and uh, we go to see George, who is on the, on the coast near Down Patrick. Mm -hmm. And you've, you've had a relationship with Loudon Guitars ever since, up until, up until now? Except four years. Mm -hmm. Four years I went with Kevin Ryan. I love the guitar Kevin did mm -hmm. for me. Yep, yep, yep. And after that, George, uh, George contacted me again and said, well, I'm back on my feet. You know, he had some issues right, with right, stuff. Right. I don't, we don't want to go into that stuff. But mm -hmm. he says, uh, are you still available? I said, yes, I'm available. So that was the end of my uh, collaboration with Kevin, who I adore. He's a beautiful man, fantastic luster. And I did one record with his guitar, which mm -hmm. is called Altiplanos. Mm -hmm. I love the sound of that record. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but Loudon is my, is my home. Tell us about the instrument that you're playing. This is, a, well, this is, it used to be a S22. Mm -hmm. Originally, it didn't have a cutaway. Mm -hmm. This guitar was made in 1978, mm -hmm. so the last millennium, last century. <laughs> it's it's a grand it's a grandmother now, mm -hmm. you know. But it's still extremely vivid, very responsive, has a beautiful tone. A bit less harmonics now than it used to be when it was younger. Mm -hmm. But the, the tone has has gone into a, a beautiful uh, chemistry, right, which right, is right. Uh, rich and very well balanced from the bass, the lower bass, uh, the, the the lower meats, the high meats, and the and the high ends. It's 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 there. Mm -hmm. the, the sound is there for me to play. So for a long time, I haven't played that guitar. I played another Loudon, which is a signature, mm -hmm. like a small a smaller guitar, which I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. But when I take this guitar again, that other guitar goes mm. back in the case. Mm -hmm. This guitar wins every time. <laughs> this is why, in fact, I don't want to touch it. I want to give a chance to the other guitar to express. So for 10 years, I played with the other guitar. Mm. And I played only with that guitar when I had to record something. Yeah. Because the recording. And then I said, OK, sorry, sorry, the old lady. We, bye. <laughs> I, I, need, I need to give time with the other one. But... Life is too short. Yes, you know this yes. is my this is my home. This guitar, all my life, is with, for 25 years. That's the only instrument I had. Right. I was going on the road with it. If that guitar was broken, I had no spare, mm -hmm. no backup guitar. I was like, okay, well, if I don't have a backup guitar, I'll go home then. Mm -hmm. You know, but I've been taking care of that guitar like, uh, like my eyes. You know, it, yeah. it's. So it doesn't have too much um, wrinkles. It has a bit of <laughs> history. And I said to George once, George, look at those little things. Can we, do you think we could redo the, 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 the he says, yeah, we could, of course. But then the, the entire changes. history yeah. of your guitar would just disappear. <laughs> yes. It would be like a, a new instrument. I said, oh, again, okay, let's not touch it. Now, uh, what, what about the pickup? Because I know you, do you, do you play sometimes through a sound system or do you prefer going through a mic? I guess you would, of course, prefer Go when I record, mic. I go with the mic, but I also like the, uh, the electroacoustic uh, side of the guitar, the crunch of the electroacoustic, the power of the electroacoustic, I like it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, um, when I play live, mm -hmm. now I don't use a, um, a mic anymore. It's all pickup. Really? Yeah, but I give, I give them the best chance for that sound to be the most natural 
mm-hmm. ever possible. You Do know? you run through any sort of processes, or you just send it right to the uh, board? Okay, so at home I run through a, a Neve uh, EQ, mm-hmm. which is like fantastic. Is you know, it's uh, it does limiter compression, but I don't really use the compression. I want really the, all the expansion to be mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. I go from the Neve into, um, at home, I go from the Neve into uh, a voice, ex- uh, a TC Elegant Voice Extreme 3, right, all right. which uh, also is great for the voice. Mm-hmm. But here in America, I use um, my Universal Audio Apollo. Okay, yeah. yeah and yeah. I use uh, the plugins of the Apollo, so I have mm-hmm. a, a laptop mm-hmm. on stage. I can feed the front of the house with my laptop, so mm-hmm. I have my own sound system, mm-hmm. I have my own speakers, and mm-hmm. acoustics, small speakers. And so I'm pretty much plug and play. Wow. Pretty much, pretty yeah. much. We tune, we, we tune with a DBX rack. We tune each acoustics of the room by sending peak noise. Mm-hmm. So we have the, the best sound possible once the room is empty. Yeah. And so that allows me to, uh, to tour on my own. And, right. and some, when I can have a sound engineer, like the house engineer, we work together, the mm-hmm. frequencies. He tells me, he's my ear in the room, and he tells me what, what it sounds like, and he gives me advice, so I, I tweak the thing from the stage. Yeah. The thing is that he doesn't have any control once the music has started and when the room has filled. And yeah. we know that when the people are it's there, different. it's yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. This is a compromise I'm able to make. Let's talk about some of the technique that you that you okay. can. Okay, uh, so in 1978, I chose to play in one tuning. I was I was I was uh, wondering which tuning should I should I play. I I know that guy. I know this other one. Drop D, the standard stuff. Mm-hmm. And I thought, if I really want to stand out mm-hmm. and 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 sound like no one, I should I should uh, at least have a completely different approach. Yes. So I chose that guy. Mm -hmm. because I played already quite a a fair amount of uh, numbers of pieces in that guy. But the difference was that I was really going to study it this time. Mm -hmm. So I never really studied the guitar until that moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, Before I was playing, I was learning my things by heart, I was playing by heart. Uh, I was very inspired by all those different tunings that allowed me to to compose uh, very, um, for me, uh, interesting pieces that really uh, get me going and, Mm -hmm. and, Help me to sign my sound. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, so I sounded like no one else, really. Mm-hmm. You know, it was at that time we had the, so the English school mm-hmm. with people like Ian Schoenborn, uh, Martin Carthy, who has been mm-hmm. a tremendous influence on me, Nick Jones, David Graham, mm-hmm. uh, and I. I was also very much attracted to all the blues player, but also the the, the country folk player like mm-hmm. Doc Watson. I mm-hmm. love Doc Watson, and mm-hmm. and, and so. I've been listening to all of those stuff, and one day Bill Keith said, listen to this. It was John McLaughlin playing, playing Good Bag Pop I had from, uh, um, from uh, Charlie Mingus mm-hmm. uh, on his record called My Goes Beyond. That mm-hmm. completely changed my life. <laughs> when I heard McLaughlin play that, and I followed McLaughlin uh, on, on, on his Shakti thing, mm-hmm. uh, where he played uh, Indian music on a mm-hmm. guitar, uh, prepared with a scallop uh, right, right, right. thread, so it was very, very intriguing. Then I started to listen more and more jazz, and I remember that I grew up listening to Django, because mm-hmm. my father was a big fan of Django, so Django was every weekend, Django, mm-hmm. Django, Django. <laughs> and all of a sudden I remember that, even if I didn't want to hear Django, because I was very young, I, I didn't relate at all to mm-hmm. this music. I relate. I related to to Beethoven, to Chopin, to uh, to uh, 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 what well, the name? Never mind. <laughs> Piano, a mm-hmm. lot of classical stuff. Yeah. Arthur Rubinstein playing the mm-hmm. Patti, playing Bach and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and to me, this uh, gypsy music was sound, was sounding too in disorder. It was yeah. a sort of disorder. The sound was a sort of disorder. Yeah. And my father said. Wait, yeah. it it will grow on you. Yeah, and he was so right. He was so right. But yeah. so this this influence came later in my life. Mm-hmm. So um, f- at the very beginning, it was very folk folk oriented. So a lot of a lot of folk tunes, mm-hmm. a lot of uh, ad- adaptations of uh, folk music, whether it was French, Celtic, Irish, Scottish, uh, American. And then I started to say, okay, one day. I did, now I'm going to play my own, only my, my material. Mm-hmm. I'm going only to write my own stuff. That was from my record called Solilai on. Mm-hmm. Before that, I played different things, mm-hmm. to French music, traditional music, but also tango, musette, mm-hmm. um, some uh, jazz uh, standards and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But 
I really wanted to, to do my own thing mm -hmm. from, from a very early moment. Even from the very first record, I started to compose music right away. Yeah. I was always called by that, you know, I didn't have to, to, to make a choice. It was mm -hmm. there, you know. So my technique has been very empiric, as we say. Mm -hmm. um, first, I played with the sun pick. Mm -hmm. I did, uh, you know, as a, a, a touch by the finger style, mm -hmm. finger picking of Mel Travis and Marcel Daddy mm -hmm. right, in, right. In, in France. So yeah. Marcel was also uh, showing those American techniques to French people and to mm -hmm. people in Europe that mm -hmm. we did. We had no idea, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I played with the Saint Pete because I thought it was cool and it was how it should be. And I started to play some finger style stuff like that. And I played with the Saint Pete for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. It's like a bit like you when you smoke and you cannot stop. <laughs> when you are addicted to smoking. And uh, it took me many years to get away from that. Mm -hmm. Because I saw flamenco guitarists, classical guitarists, and they had a a tone right. with a thumb which was out of this world and I you know I'm my ear are I'm musically trained so I go I am going to adapt my technique following what I hear right I listen first I play second I mm -hmm. don't do the other way around mm -hmm. so I always listen to what I do and so even with the same pick I was able to modify the touch the tone to play different things sometimes to, to put my flesh so that mm -hmm. there would be also that flesh but when I when I heard Paco de Lucia mm -hmm. playing with his thumb this thumb was like a, it was like a complete instrument mm -hmm. by itself yeah and also classical players uh, with a beautiful tone I said I have I, ha I have to do something I have to mm -hmm. change so I started to really be very self-conscious about the sun pick mm -hmm. although I, I was doing you know solo lines with the sun pick you know like <laughs> you know the, the loot technique yeah uh, some index some middle and stuff like that mm -hmm. but after a while uh, I said uh, I started to play less and less sun pick Mm -hmm. And one day, one concert in Italy, I sort of commit to myself, this concert, no some big. Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow. <gasps> I was feeling completely naked on stage, right. you know. And the fact to, uh, to, play, to play for, for an audience helped me, in fact, to get to the right places. Mm -hmm. Because the music wanted to come out, so the music came out. Mm -hmm. And, and my, my, my right hand adapted itself. So it taught me a lot, that show taught me a lot. Yeah. After I started to play things with some pick and some of the things with, without some pick. So it was, I was doing this kind of compromise until the moment where I, the some pick completely disappeared from, yeah. my, from my life, you know. Uh, you've done so many amazing compositions over the, over the years. Um, can you play us play sure. something that you've... Yeah, you've... yeah. What are you going to play for us? The Alchemist. Ah, okay. Just a, just a hint. Mm -hmm. Should uh, should I stop at some point and, 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 and talk about like a, a bit of a workshop or...? Whatever you want to do. Yeah. We, we, like, it's always uh, just so beautiful to hear you play, so... of this tune is like when I, when I, I come up with something I, I try to find the source mm -hmm. why do I play this and where does it come from it came very very quickly it was a tune from Bob Dylan which I used to sing a long time ago mm -hmm. the times they are changing mm -hmm. 
So I said, okay, now I have, I have, I, I know where it's coming from. So I have to change, to change it so that it becomes more personal, mm -hmm. and this, and then I can really pay respect to Bob Dylan by by not phrasing him, mm -hmm. but going in my own in right, my own right. world with his inspiration, which mm -hmm. is immense, you know, as mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned. And so that 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 thing came in my imagination, not on a guitar at all. Mm -hmm. You know it. I started to sing this this line like do, 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 do. like a, a little boy lost on a big stage mm -hmm. alone and calling for help. Mm -hmm. Is there someone? Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. And then the adults were coming. You see, this is my imagination. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I triggered. I tri the imagination triggers the the, the music really. Then the adult starts to come and surround him and say, you are not alone. And the adult says, a bit. So I started to, to hear this tune, not only melodically, but I heard everything. I mm -hmm. heard the melody, the chords, bass, the tempo, the mode, mm -hmm. you know. But I didn't want to, to, to touch my guitar. I didn't touch the guitar for months. Mm -hmm. I, I really wanted to have this thing happening here. Mm -hmm. Only and not be is, be influenced mm -hmm. by by my limitations on my guitar. Right. Because sometimes you compromise your ideas because you let your fingers rule you and your fingers, you know, they they don't know. Mm -hmm. They just know what they what they know, but they don't rule. You mm -hmm. command them. Mm -hmm. So I composed a lot of this music in my imagination, and when I take my when I took my guitar to play it for the first time, it was like, what? It's so easy. It's a C major. Mm -hmm. So you see, I'm in that guy, but as soon as you play a C major, that guy disappears. Mm -hmm. freedom in your playing I uh, try I try I try to let it go you know but the thing is I did study that guy mm -hmm. so that guy is no longer that guy for me mm -hmm. for a lot of people that guy remained that guy because they don't dive in it mm -hmm. they, they they sort of collect what that guy offers at first which is very important this is how you build your your relationship with the mm -hmm. tuning and you want to go deeper in it. Mm -hmm. But you have to go deeper in it, otherwise mm -hmm. you are going to sound like everybody else. Right, you know, right. with a lot of open strings, a lot of D, like me at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I'm not different. Mm -hmm. The thing is that when I made that commitment to play in only one tuning, I knew I, I, I really had to do the homework. Yeah. You know, to, 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 to acquire more freedom for improvisation, to know harmony, to be able to accompany, accompany anything in whatever the tonality. Mm -hmm. So at, at the beginning, you know, you play a lot of uh, D. But if I, but if I to build that, to to look for the chords everywhere they are, you know. Just to say that we don't think that God anymore. Yeah. So that God is my native tuning. It's yeah. not an, a tuning a tuning of accommodement. It's not something that I. It's really where where I for, I, I need to forget to forget this tuning. I need to forget my guitar. So the yeah. the ideal moment for me is when I'm on on tour and I have a day off where I don't have to drive yeah, yeah. and I, I have my guitar in my arms from the morning until the evening. And I play, and I forget that I play. Yeah. I just, for, and this is what happened during those two years of lockdown. That's what I did. Yes. I I wrote a lot of music. I played a lot of music. I spent time with my guitar, and doing other things also. You know, like releasing the pressure also is, is very mm -hmm. good, because touring is is pressure, and pressure is is good sometimes, but sometimes it's it makes you do things too quickly, mm -hmm. and music. Likes to take the time it takes. 
There is no agenda. There is no deadline. Right. You know, music. We 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 say in French, you cannot go faster than music. Mm -hmm. You you can try, mm -hmm. but music dictates its own tempo, and sometimes it's a tempo on a long time. Yeah. And I I saw that. I saw that. Uh, I played things on my new record, for instance. But now that I play them again, and that I played them more and more, it's a song completely different. Yeah. I start to really understand what the music needs. Yeah. You know? So it's a pity sometimes to go in a studio too soon, you know, because uh, to, uh, to play this music live, there is a sense of emergency and the music takes off by itself. Yeah. So you have to be ready for this take taking off, you know, you have to go with it. it, it you need that, to, to the breathing of the music, the being able to, it's, it's improvisation, it's, it's being in the moment with the, with, the, uh, with the music that you're creating, rather than just playing it from A to B. Um, I mean, you can, it's good to play it from A to B at the beginning, because this is all you know. Mm -hmm. The music hasn't started to speak to you yet. Yes. You know, so this is all you know. So you go, for, you go for, with what you know, and it's quite pleasant and it's beautiful and everything. But there are several layers after that, mm -hmm. and and those layers, I think, have to do with playing live for people, mm -hmm. because you cannot stop when mm -hmm. you start when you start playing uh, in a concert. You have to go. Mm -hmm. So you know in your head that you have to go. So this is a complete different uh, uh, mechanisms in place. In yes. Fact. You know, not mechanisms, it's not the word I wanted to use. But the organization of music takes a different, a different uh, depth there, mm -hmm. you know, because the music basically says, OK, now you and I, it was very good to meet you and thank you for serving me. But now that I am in front of your people, I'm going to show those people what I can be. <laughs> and you, you better be ready for, to let this music express itself. So you, ser you have to serve this music. Yeah. You know? So all the homework that I do, that we do, musicians at home, is in fact to, to get to that moment of truth, mm -hmm. of authenticity. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is why I'm playing live, nothing replaces that. And for two years, although I felt great not having to play live, but I was missing it. Yes, and, yes. And, um, and the people were never far away. In fact, they were always at the end of the tunnel. I always remembered them and always aimed to play for them. Well, I know, I know you're on tour now. And you're here in the States and have been here for several weeks already. Yeah. Um, and you're going to be here for another month, you said? Another two months. Another two months. Until the end of, um, until the end of May. I invite people to go on my website to look at all the dates. And I will then return uh, to France for, for the summer. And I will come back at the end of the summer, early September, until the end of November, to resume my tour. So I'm driving. So I'm going from North Carolina all the way south to the west coast. And then from the from the south of West Coast, from San Diego all the way north to British Columbia, mm -hmm. and then back to Washington State. I leave my my van there, and uh, and then from there I resume the tour and go back on the East Coast, going through the north. Mm -hmm. So it's it's in September, October, so it should not be too cold, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, I think we have people. Uh, yes, we've got a couple of questions that have come up. Yeah. Uh, George is saying. George Sheldon is asking, is there a cutting edge technique? That you are working on at this point is there is there a technique that you're that you're exploring? Uh, oh, always, always. Um, one 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 thing that I I like to work on is uh, the harp effect technique. <laughs> Like you, you play a scale, for instance, mm -hmm. a, D, a D major scale. But instead of you, you go to, to distribute the notes of that scale on as many strings as possible in order to get a, a polyphony of resonances, mm -hmm. and you work with those resonances. Mm -hmm. Instead of going to the B right, on the right. second bass string, I go to the B on the first bass string. Mm -hmm. So already there, I have two notes. And it's that dovetailing of notes. It's like and yeah, and, and then they notes. coexist together, you know. Yeah. So you could you could then decide that only one is going to leave, the other one is going to die. Mm -hmm. Then you have to work with your right hand technique in order to 
to have your fingers working in dual, in dual movement. Mm -hmm. One movement to initiate the sound and another movement, the same finger, to stop the sound. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to move fingers without necessary initiate sound, mm -hmm. but to control the sound. Yeah. Then if you, keep, if you stop pressing on the left hand, Okay, that note disappears. You don't need to release mm -hmm. your finger. Just stop pressing. Mm -hmm. Then it's very keyboard-like, you know, yeah. like harpsichord and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But you could also use a right-hand technique. Here, what I'm doing is that as soon as my thumb plays, then the index plays. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the index plays, the thumb comes back on the first bass and kills it, mm -hmm. just by resting on it. Right, right. Same thing with the index and middle finger. fascinating to mm -hmm. me I'm, I'm like when I start playing like that I'm drawn by mm -hmm. you know so I, I've been in fact sort of rationalizing mm -hmm. this uh, playing like uh, measure scales in every tonality like mm -hmm. So this is something that I advise people to really look into. Whatever the tuning, mm -hmm. doesn't have to mean that guy. This is a concept that works mm -hmm. in whatever the tuning. Right, right. You know. Right, right. So that's one thing, and uh, uh, the other thing is like, it's really I do a lot of right hand stuff mm -hmm. because this is where it's at. You know, uh, the sound comes from the right hand. For instance, um, when we do workshop, I um, I tell people to to do a little arpeggio like this with the thumb resting on the first bass mm -hmm. and playing uh, ring finger, middle finger, index finger, middle finger on four strings. Mm -hmm. So playing a 4-4 four, four measure and then implementing the bass on the first beat, second beat, third beat and fourth beat. Mm -hmm. Everywhere, mm -hmm. nowhere. So first beat, second beat, third beat, fourth beat, and then the bass on the one end, one and two, three, four, mm -hmm. and the two end on the three end on the four end. Mm -hmm. What a great exercise. Everywhere. The sum is very important, you know, yeah, yeah. it has to be able to be independent from whatever happens in the rest with the rest of the fingers. Mm -hmm. Especially a lot of the bass lines is started, initiated with the sum, not mm -hmm. only but with the sum. So it needs to be rhythmically free. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever rhythmically happens with the other fingers, it needs to be there mm -hmm. at, at any time. So it's a good way to do that. I, I, do, also, I do also some stretching exercises, mm -hmm. because in that guard, the stretches are even more important. Right, right, right. So, so this is a classical guitar exercise mm -hmm. that sounds so so in standard tuning. It sounds very beautiful in that guard. Mm -hmm. Then the index comes down, one fret. Middle comes down one fret, index comes down one fret, little finger comes up one fret. At the end of the pattern, and you end up with an empty fret in every finger. Mm -hmm. And then you keep your index where it is, so mm -hmm. here it's in the 10th fret, and you mm -hmm. bring your three other fingers in the 11th, 12th, and 13th frets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You go on. 
guitars to hurt a little bit. Yeah. If it doesn't hurt me, but it will start hurting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Mm. Yes. I feel I feel here and here. Have you had have you ever had problems with with hand issues? Uh, when I stop playing, yes. When you stop playing? When I stop playing and I go back, when I stop playing, my hands hurt. Mm -hmm. But when I keep playing, I think it's a fantastic exercise for the hand. The hand yeah. is always warm. Yeah. So, um, you know, if some people have, have um, synchronization issues, I think mm -hmm. playing an instrument is fantastic for the, for the fingers, right, right. for the hand, you know. Yeah. Um, the idea is to not, to not overdo a movement in where you are, you you feel pain. Mm -hmm. If you feel pain, it's, it, it means something. It means that you have overdone something, and your body cannot take it. So you mm -hmm. have to respect your body, and mm -hmm. you have to be very careful. That otherwise, mm -hmm. you could go to a tendinitis very quickly. Right. right, right. So, other than that, no. Yeah. I'm I'm lucky. Uh, I'm lucky with my fingers so far. You know. Yeah. Yeah. One of the techniques I've always appreciated uh, of yours is how you use harmonics. And how you incorporate oh. harmonics into into the music. That when you're the playing. sound, when the sound, sometimes it's like pluk, you know. <laughs> sometimes it's like okay, well, sorry. I but come sometimes back it's time. magic. <laughs> but sometimes it's magic, you know. Yeah. Well, the concept of harmonics is a. Now, so physically, what are you doing there? Tell, explain for those that can't see. When I'm just, I'm just visualizing twelve frets higher, mm -hmm. the chords that I'm playing twelve mm -hmm. frets lower. And you're. You're plucking with your. So here thinking, I'm. I or? am. I am above the fretboard. Mm -hmm. So the nail mm -hmm. m can create a sound on the wood. Mm -hmm. So I'm. I'm going to use my little finger, which mm -hmm. is smaller. Mm -hmm. So with the nail, which is less long, mm -hmm. in order to minimize the risk of uh, noise. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so you're you're fretting the note with your index finger. And plucking with your pinky. Exactly. Yes. Right now, yeah. But if I, you know, a harmonic is going to sound. You see already, I'm now the finger that picks the string is above the sound hole. So mm -hmm. I can I, I can then use another finger. Mm -hmm. I always key, I will still use my index finger to prepare the sound, mm -hmm. but I will use now my ring finger. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because also the notes are—it's expanded the, the the pitch of the guitar. Mm -hmm. I mean, the first one who who did that was Lenny Bro. Not mm -hmm. not not like that. He had mm -hmm. all this technique, which I'm not a big expert of. Mm -hmm. Tommy Emmanuel is a great mm -hmm. expert of this technique, mm -hmm. with the cross country arpeggios. Mm -hmm. the, okay, but um, it really helps the guitar to augment by one or two octaves the sound of the guitar. Right. And when Lenny Bro, I, I heard Lenny Bro in '79. In Nashville, at a, in a jazz club, playing, and to me, it was sounding like a, a, a Fender Rhodes. Mm -hmm. His technique was like, oh my God, this, what what is this? And then the the guy who took Lenny Bro's technique and he even went even further was Ted Green. Yes, yes. It was also unbelievable, you know. Mm -hmm. So me, I, I'm like, uh, I use harmonics as a, a sort of sparkle to uh, you know to, mm -hmm. to surprise uh, the ear at some point, you know. Uh, Uh, well, um, can you play us an example of putting harmonics in a more of a musical context in the middle yeah. of a piece? How, how they complement. This one. So rings one once out of three times, <laughs> and when it doesn't ring, it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> but it's 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 a it's a matter of luck mm -hmm. because there is nowhere really to look 
that says this is this is exactly there. You, right. It's like it's a funny feel that you you have no mark, and mm -hmm. it's like you see, I went straight there. One truc, um That's another example where you slide. Beautiful. And because this guitar is what it is, you, you hear higher harmonics. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, let's let Pierre catch his breath for just um, a moment. George Sheldon, I know him. What does he say, George? Uh, George Sheldon. Wow, picking those harmonics with your pinky. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, we are going to have a couple of giveaways. Um, you graciously have one of your CDs that we'll, my new we'll... CD has one. I would love to give a couple away. That's sure. that sounds great. Tell us about that CD, or maybe you could even play us a piece from it. Uh, well, I just did a, li a, li a little. Uh, as one is a, a little s sequence. <laughs> thing is that the, the hand works in big expansion here. Mm -hmm. So this is not the kind of piece I could play at the beginning of a show. Mm -hmm. Even if I'm warm before to do a show because I played several hours, mm -hmm. uh, if I want to build my confidence, I would not build my confidence with a piece like this because, mm -hmm. because it's very demanding on the hand. Yes. What I'm doing is only... And then from A to F, to mm -hmm. F sharp, and from F sharp to D, mm -hmm. and back to A. Mm -hmm. So, you know. When we start mixing some vibrato, Attacking, starting to attack closer to the to the um, saddle. Mm -hmm. Then it builds up. Yeah. You know. So yeah, that's one of the pieces. It's called As One. That's mm -hmm. one of the pieces of my new album. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a record that. Um, in fact, I did before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I took uh, I took time off touring in order to make that record happen. So when mm -hmm. when I, I went on tour in 2020, that record just came out before the tour. Mm -hmm. So and then I had this 110 concerts uh, tour lined up. And after the fourth concert, I went home with my record, which was right, right, right. still new and uh, that music had had never been played live. Mm -hmm. So I am now, in fact, starting to play those tunes live on mm -hmm. stage. Yes, you know. Let's pick two names. Let's pick two names and give away um, one. Uh, the first name is Dave Mercer. Uh, Dave, you have just won uh, one of uh, Pierre's as one. CDs, as one. Uh, se Dave, send me your I information at service at guitargathering.com, and, uh, and we will go from there. And then let's give one to Steve Vegas, one, two, three. 
Steve Vegas123, you're going to be in Las Vegas. I'm going to meet uh, my new buddy, Donny Osmond. Donny Osmond. <laughs> in, in Las Vegas. Donny has uh, very kindly invited me to hang with him for three mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. I played in his uh, last record. We mm -hmm. did uh, a song that he, he wrote called Footprints. Mm -hmm. So myself on guitar, uh, Philip Seth on keyboards, and mm -hmm. Donny on vocal. Just the three of us. It's a very beautiful song. I, I, you know, I didn't know. I, I didn't grow up with the Osmond Brothers. This really? is a very American thing. In, in Europe, in France, we, we were more uh, introduced to uh, the music of J Jackson 5, for instance. Right, right, right. Yeah. So I knew the name. So when I received that email from Donny Osmond, I said, Donny Osmond, is it, is it the Osman Brothers? Mm -hmm. And it was. How did he f come across you? How did he find well, you? Well, he told me I'm listening to one of your tracks uh, for years, at least once a week. <laughs> and uh, so I had no idea, and he said, um, I would love to invite you to... And so he sent me that song, a row vocal with Philippe playing keyboards. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, this is absolutely beautiful. So mm -hmm. I took my time. It's a story, I'm not going to tell the story here, but mm -hmm. it's an interesting story. I took, I took my time to, to, uh, to, uh, to make that thing happen. And, uh, and finally, we made it happen. We recorded it. I sent the files to, to him, and he was very, very happy with the result. Wow. So it is on his red new album called Start Again, which came out uh, some four, four or five months ago. Mm -hmm. And, um, and he, he, looked at, he looked at my tour, mm -hmm. and he saw that I had three days off. He says, you're going to be very tired. Come and rest in Las Vegas. <laughs> so he's, he's covering my back and never, it's everything, yeah. you know, it's going to be very nice to meet him finally. Yes. And I love, I love his new album, I love his singing, mm -hmm. and he's a beautiful human being. Amazing. Yeah. You never, you never know how far the music that you create goes. Exactly. I mean, the, the, music, the music has its own traveling agenda. I know. One of the first... You know? We have um, people from Brazil here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see? And when, when I was first learning fingerstyle, I came across your uh, Le Voyage for Ireland. Ireland. And uh, that song, you know, really impacted me when I was just learning. And, uh, for our, our Brazilian friends. For friend. our Brazilian friends, yes. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, a few folks are asking, Mark is asking, where can we purchase your Z CD? Tell us about your, uh, well, you your can, website. You, on my website, pierrebensuzon.com. You can order it there. You can also order it on Amazon. But if you order it from me, it's better. <laughs> um, and you have other books and resources? Oh, and yeah. Things? I just made, in fact, all the music from my new CD, all the content of the score is on my new book called Guitar Collection on Hal Leonard. That book came at the same time, mm -hmm. came out at the same time the CD came out in two years ago. Mm -hmm. So it has all the score from the CD plus a dozen tunes that I play on stage as well, played live on stage, different arrangements. So it has that plus a whole technical approach. Uh, it's... It's a book that I, I did, uh, I, I, I took eight months mm -hmm. to, to make it just, uh, and then the new album just after that. Mm -hmm. So I've been very busy before to go, to go on tour two years ago, you know. Uh, we have a few moments um, uh, to, uh, before we need to let you go, because I know you're going to have dinner with Phil Keggy tonight. Yeah, I'm so. going, I'm, we are going to jam together, yeah, <laughs> at a, a common friend where I'm staying in, in uh, Nashville, in Bellevue. Um, okay, Mark is asking, what type of rest does Pierre use to brace his guitar? Uh, the rest? Uh, this? 
Uh, he's talking about oh, this? Maybe that's what it is. Yes, yes, uh, yes. It's, uh, it's a, a company called NECUP Support, NECUP, yeah. by, uh, made by Mark Hamry, uh, H-A-M-R-E. Mm -hmm. And so you can visit NECUP Support online and you can order uh, things from him. It has it comes with, with two tents, the black one, but also the, the skin color. Mm -hmm. it's, it's made in leather, and this is absolutely fantastic. Especially, I mean, I use a classical position. I switched to the classical position some years ago. And I, I at first, I was like every classical uh, people, I was using a, a foot rider. Foot and yeah, soon yeah. I started to really feel pains in my pelvis and this unbalancing. Between the, it was not not great and so i love that because i'm my two feet are really balanced on the ground there's, there's a lot of stability and for the lower back it's fantastic so i am in fact advising this to people who have back pains mm -hmm. they should give it a try because that might resolve their issues and mm -hmm. how is it attached to the to the instrument so it is attached by this pin here mm -hmm. in fact, normal strap pin and then a suction cup yeah, exactly. So you have that. So you take that, you reverse it. So there's no there's no drilling into your guitar or anything like no, that? No, I mean, it's the drilling is, you have to drill in need, order to well, get you that. Well, in your normal You pin. need, you yeah, need yeah. a, how do you call that, a pin? Uh, yeah, uh, your normal end pin. In that. pin, in pin. That's yeah. A, yeah, that's also a jack. Pin, yeah, you know. yeah. So that, and then you take, how do you call that? A regular suction cup. Suction cup. I'm learning, I'm learning. So you need you need to put uh, to put a bit of your own humidity there, mm -hmm. and <laughs> and that and that, and you can you can of course control the distance you know right, you, right. you can control. Mm -hmm. So this is really it should not be too high because if you, if it's high then your left arm is high too. It's very it's not good. Mm -hmm. You are going to be very tired. So it should be you have to sort of. Uh, feel what is the position which is um, ideal for you. And, and, and then the thing is, the guitar is a little bit loose like this. Mm -hmm. So what I do, which I didn't bring with me, I use a strap mm -hmm. that I attach uh, to that other pin here right, right. and to that other pin here mm -hmm. around my back mm -hmm. so that I can really play. I can, the guitar is securely right, close right. to me and I can play with the movement on the guitar and mm -hmm. create a uh, natural chorus. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of that. Yes. But but before, when I played like that, the guitar was very secure, so it was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Not anymore. So I had to find a different way to make it happen. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Um, if there's another question, go ahead and uh, uh, type it in there. We'll try and get one more before we have to go. Where are you going on from here? I know you go to I'm going Mississippi. To, tomorrow I'm driving to Jackson, Mississippi. I'm mm -hmm. going to play there the next day. Then I'm going to McKinney near, near Dallas in mm -hmm. Texas. And from there I'm going to go to Colorado. I'm going to spend an entire week of playing in uh, Arvada, Longmont, uh, Denver, Boulder. We're going to do some seminars as well. Mm -hmm. And from there, I'm going to uh, New Mexico. I'm going to shoot a documentary with uh, a filmmaker there in Santa Fe. Then I'm going to Albuquerque, Sedona. And from mm -hmm. Sedona, mm -hmm. I'm going to meet Donny in Vegas. And from <laughs> Vegas, I'm going to, uh, to San Diego. And I'm going to play in that uh, jazz club in San Diego and then drive all the way up, mm -hmm. all the way to British Columbia. Mm -hmm. And then Washington, I'm going to play several, one week of shows in Washington State. Mm -hmm. Uh, addressing some seminars, schools, school outreach also mm -hmm. for, for children for, mm -hmm. for uh, like uh, 10, 11, 12 years old, mm -hmm. 9 years old. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's, it is tiring, but, but people give me so much energy and the music energizes me. Yes. So I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm very, very happy to be on the road again. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, uh, Quiet is asking about fingernail uh, length, Aha. shape, stuff like that. I notice you are wearing... <laughs> Acrylic, uh, acrylic, acrylic nails, acrylic uh, nails, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, the natural nails don't last more than a, a couple hours when you play on steel string because the strings, in fact, uh, become like nail file when mm -hmm. you play, uh, uh, you put your, your nails there so and you can break them. So I had to find a, a solution. Uh, I went to a nail salon a long time ago in Paris and then started to... Um, 
to, to go there for 12 years and then I finally got the products and did it myself. Now I have the products and do it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have a kit in my dressing room bag, I have a kit in my suitcase where I'm <laughs> staying, I have several kits in France, so I'm, I buy a lot of those products so to make sure, to make yeah. sure that I'm not, uh, uh, you know, on, on, I right. always, always can relate to that. What type of strings are you playing on these days? I play my own strings. In fact, they are made by Nick Walton in Toronto, handmade with mm. a coaching that Nick Walton developed. Nick Walton is the owner of Wires, that company, mm. Wire Strings. He learned his skill, his craft, uh, uh, when he was working with Labella. Mm -hmm. Then he founded Wires. He approached me about 15 years or 20 years ago. And I said to him, you know, I really like your strings because for coated strings, they sound very natural. They almost sound like John Pierce, which for me are right, right, right. beautiful, beautiful strings. strings. Uh, uh, there is another brand in England also of beautiful strings, but they don't last. Yeah. They die very quickly. That was a big frustration. Mm -hmm. For a while, I played with the Dario. And for a long time, I played with Elixir, which was like a revolution mm -hmm. when Elixir you know, came about. It was, mm -hmm. oh, finally, I don't have to worry about the strings. The thing is that they sound the same all mm -hmm. the time. Yeah. So it, when, I, when I heard wires, it was like going back to the natural sound of yeah, the, yeah. the real string with a coating which prevents them to wear out, to wear out too fast. Mm -hmm. So Nick said, uh, how can we work together? I said, well, I'm playing it that guy, so let's make a set mm -hmm. for that guy, which is a combination of medium gauge and light gauge. Mm -hmm. So the first bass is medium, the two trebles are medium, so 56, 17, 13, and all the three in between bass strings are mm -hmm. light gauge. Mm -hmm. So that's the string they use. Wow. Yeah. Uh, can you close this out with a song? Sure. What, what can I, what can we do? Uh, hmm. 